Hello everyone and welcome to Whimsy Wednesday. I hope you are all doing well and that your summer has been enjoyable so far. Here it's been nice and warm, a little warmer than it usually is. And it's also been a little bit dry. Clara says hello. You saying hello? Uh-huh. What else do you want to say? Okay. So today I have a special little project for us. My mom picked some lavender for me. Uh, we have a you pick place a few towns over and I didn't get a chance to get over there but she did and she picked uh, a few handfuls of lavender and then she asked me if I had any directions for making lavender wands. I don't. <laughs> Uh, I know how to do them in my head, so I decided, you know what, I'm going to do a video on how to do lavender wands. So this smells really good. You are going to want fresh lavender, as fresh as you can get. This is picked yesterday fresh. It's been sitting in some water. You can use slightly dried uh, lavender. Uh, but there's one part about doing this uh, where having the fresh is going to turn out a little better. So you're going to want lavender with uh, heads that are a few inches long. All right, These are about three inches, maybe a little longer. And then some very long stems. All right, You're going to want at least double the length of the head. So about six inches of stem. So in total at least nine inches. These are longer, which is great because that's going to let us have some really long stems. You're also going to want some narrow ribbon. I have some nice ombres here. Uh, you could easily use Ofray's narrow ribbon that's about a quarter of an inch wide. Uh, it's available at a lot of the big box craft shops. Hop back, please. All right, one thing to know, lavender is not a kitty-friendly um, fragrance. So um, you can have in the house, but don't let them nibble and sniff a lot. If I remember correctly, I think it's a nervous issue, but don't quote me on that. I should have looked that up before, um, but just a warning. Okay, so lavender ribbon. Uh, you may want a bodkin with a long, wide eye. I think you get a hint of that there. And you could use a little bit of twine as well. Of course, we want some scissors. I'm going to use a one yard length of ribbon to start with, and then we'll use a little bit more for the bow. I just wanted to give an accurate look of what one yard is going to look like. Now out of your lavender bunch, we are going to want an odd number of stalks. So one, two, three, Seven, eight, nine. We'll go with nine. Nine sounds like a good number today. Now, as you saw me picking through that, I aimed for pieces that were all about the same length. I did not go for the longest ones because, I'll be honest, I want to save those and see if I can do some really nice ones when I'm focused off camera. All right, so these are all about the same length. You're gonna to wanna to come through 
and pull off all of your excess little petals to clean the stalks up. Now it's best to have stalks or stems that are all about the same thickness. If you happen to have one that's overly thick, that's fine. If you have one that's thinner, you can always double it up. Alright. So we're going to even these up based on the tops of the heads. Okay, can you see how those heads are nice and even? That means the ends aren't necessarily even. But we're going to fix that towards the end. And I have just about all of those extra little leaves pulled off. I made a nice little mess down here. Now I'm going to take a little bit of twine. I'm going to use the twine to tie at the base of these heads. Now I could go all the way up here to the top and miss these little guys and that would give me about that much space. Well, you know what, I think I'm going to move that one up a little bit. Yeah, there we go. So I'm going to tie right there. I'm going to take this little bit of this bud off to even that up. There we go. And this is where I'm going to tie. I'm going to tie this in a knot. I like to wrap it back around to the other side and tie in a knot again. Of course, you're welcome to set your little bouquet down and tie this against the table. <laughs> there we go. All right. Now you can snip those ends off if you like, or you can wrap them around. Now there is an advantage to wrapping them around gives you a little more bulk at what's going to be the very top of your wand. Now next, we're going to take our ribbon. And actually, that started to make a little bow for me already. You know, it's got a little bow. Well, maybe that's not going to work. I think we're just going to have to wrap it around. I'm just going to try to do that one-handed. I'm going to wrap your uh, ribbon around and just tie the very end onto your little sprig bouquet here. You'll probably want to do a little knot. There you go. You can see what that looks like. All right. Now here's the fun and tricky part. We're going to turn it upside down. Okay, so what's going to happen is we're going to bring all of these stems down and we're going to encompass the heads, all right? And then we're going to put the ribbon on the outside. So you want to bring these down nice and carefully, slowly, kind of coax a little bit because the slower and more gently you do this, the less likely to have those stems break. And you're going to try to do this as evenly as possible around the whole piece, the whole um, set of heads of your sprig. Now I'm actually using the tip of my finger, my thumbnail here, to soften as I pull this down. Now this is something I learned with my straw. And I'm just realizing that I do that with this. And that's going to give me softer tops and decrease the likelihood of breakage. 
last one. And this is the one that's kind of hanging out in the middle. So it wants to be a little fussy. All right. So here we go. You can see how those are all hanging out down below. This little ribbon's going to tuck inside as we go. And here's where we're going to begin to weave. I like to hold these with one hand and weave with the other. All right. If you wish, thread the other end of your ribbon with your bodkin and use your bodkin to guide in and out of your pieces. Now the first one's going to be one of the trickier ones. You want to get that nice and flat. And this is simply an over under technique. Now the first couple are the hardest because you're going to be setting your pattern and the positioning of your stems. Now you're noticing probably that what I'm actually doing right now is letting go every other stem. This does help me with the counting. If you choose to do this, you of course can do so. And you'll know you've got your weave started right when you get back around to your first row and find that you're going over one that you had previously gone under. Notice facial expressions. The stranger there are, the better your wand will come out. All right. So can you see on this strand here, I went over and now I've gone under. So on the next one that I had gone under, I am going over. And I am realizing to my dismay that I can see my twine inside. I don't recall that being such an issue before. <laughs> I do know some people will tie their stems together with just the ribbon. And that will, of course, prevent seeing that twine like I can on mine. All right. As you get going, all right, can you see here how that's further apart? You're going to want to make sure you coax those stems to be as even as possible. Sometimes they're agreeable, sometimes they're not, and occasionally you do lose some flowers. You want to keep your ribbon as even as possible. Mine's making it easy because uh, with this ombre effect, I can see that I want the dark stripe up <laughs> at all times. Now, if you're unfamiliar with lavender wands, um, my understanding is that these were good for in the dresser drawer, or the pocket, or even tucked in your bodice to smell nice. Now, this is entirely hearsay, I know, and not necessarily documented by anything I've read, because this is something I grew up with. Um, this is a project that 
campers learn or were learning um, back in the 80s during summer sampler at the museum. And the idea is to encompass all of these flowers as you go. I'm realizing I accidentally have a couple sticking out. Oh. And I just went under where I was supposed to go over. There we go, that's the problem. And the goal is to wrap everybody inside And you're going to kind of end up with an oblong um, woven section. It's going to be fatter in the middle. This is also, I believe, the one and only entry category in the horticulture section of our agricultural society fair that I ever enter. I don't think I've ever entered anything else at least that I can remember. And that's because while my mother has a green thumb and my brother has a green thumb, I do not. I belong neither in the kitchen nor the garden. My talents lie in braiding and weaving fibers together, not growing or cooking them. Progress. Can you see me yet? Alright. It's going to take a while. Now, in terms of ribbon thickness, um, this is about three eighths of an inch. I would recommend. Um, not too much narrower than this. Three years? Is that right? Yeah. A quarter of an inch will be lovely. I believe a half inch would be too wide. Unless you wanted to do a much larger wand, which I've seen. I've seen wands done that are quite large, almost like encompassing the whole bundle that I have here in front of me. And that would be combining um, multiple pieces. Clara, dear, you're going to need to get down. Mommy's working on something you can't have. I know. It smells pretty, but it's bad for you. So yeah, I'll be cleaning up this area and putting the flowers up when I'm done out of habit I put flowers up because Clara's predecessor loved flowers loved chewing on them and as we all know that is not a good thing it's not only in the part where you know, they're pretty. Uh-oh, what'd I do? I did it again. Not only in the part where they're pretty, um, but some flowers, of course, can be bad for kiddies. Lilies are at the top of that list.
which I suppose is okay because I suspect lilies are one of the things that I have crazy allergies to. So while I'm weaving, a um, little catch up. This coming weekend is chocolate weekend at the Genesee Country Village and Museum. I will be there on Saturday. I'm going to bring the materials for the pocket that I talked about. And I also bring, I think, if I can find it all, some chocolatey brown moire ribbon. And I may have a piece of millinery to decorate by then. Do a chocolatey brown hat. I'm dropping flowers everywhere. So the flowers I will put into a bowl and save those for sachets when they are dry. And of course we did ribbon sachets a few weeks ago. Let's see if I can remember to link that video in case you missed it. All right, so chocolate weekend. And then the following weekend is going to be the Living History 1860s event. I will be talking about women's employment and women's work during the era, uh, the various jobs um, women had specifically within the millinery industry. So straw plating, straw sewing, factory assistants, milliners, milliners assistants, millinery workers, all the ramifications in that type of position, and then also uh, flower makers, lace makers, veil makers. Okay, I'm going to tighten this up a little bit. Let me see if I can show you how I'm doing this. So I'm going to pull the loops as I work my way around. I'm not getting a whole lot of space because I was doing fairly well. Am I going in the right direction? Oop. You can see I'm pulling a loop there. This tightens everything up, keeps everything inside nice and snug, and ensures that I get the optimal use out of my ribbon. Just getting shorter here. I'm a little worried that I didn't quite get the length that I should have, which is fine because I did want to test how much a yard would give me. All right, you can see how that's tightening that down. Now you don't want to go too tight. Remember, we want to have it wider in the middle. And we're just about reaching that point where we want it widest. I'll probably regain a, a half inch of of ribbon here. There we go. And I can continue. And it can continue and tangle. I've reached a section where there's a lot of buds, so I'm going to treat this more like I would a basket to make sure I get all of those buds down inside. I'm going to use my bodkin and my fingers to guide. 
And the bodkin's also good for poking them back inside. There we go. I just added a new event to my calendar for August, uh, but I don't know if it's official yet, so stay tuned for that. I'm very excited about what we'll be doing for this event. And I think you will too if you are local. And honestly, if you're far away, I hope you're jealous. <laughs> oh, that was awful to say. I'm sorry. I'm really, I feel bad for folks that, that don't have really good events in their area. But if you don't have good events in your area, make a mini event. Um, years ago, we did a mini, uh-oh, what'd I do? Gotta back up. Years ago, we did a mini event, uh, just for us type of situation, uh, where we had a picnic, and then we went on a cruise on a steamboat, and it was just like a little less than a dozen of us. We did different time periods, and not everyone knew each other, so it gave people from different museums and interpretive backgrounds a chance to, to get to know each other. And I think everybody had a good time. But that type of event can be so much fun. You just have to find the right setting. It could be a park. It could be a quiet beach. And I just twisted my ribbon. It could be a botanical garden. You could totally do a zoo too, if you really wanted to. That could be interesting. I'm getting nervous about the length of my ribbon. have probably an inch and a half to go. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm realizing I'm way down below the camera. I am so sorry. I get all focused. I have to remember not to do that. Or to adjust the camera. Or one of these days I'm going to afford a second camera. For a brief moment the other day, I was picturing trying to do this with threads, similar to um, what I'm using for the corded pin balls. And while I think it would look so cool, I just don't know. I, I think it could be so difficult to do the reverse that it might drive me a little batty in attempting to do this. I suppose one option would be to wrap the blooms, the heads, with a tissuey fabric. So maybe like a lawn. Which would create a flatter surface 
to do the inverted weave around. Getting closer to the end. I'm going to tighten up. Oh, Clara. You're dangly things, though, Ma. Clara likes dangly things. I'm tightening this up. really brings the end of the eye. See how it's coming back in together? Right. Going a little further. Because the stalks are coming back in towards each other, definitely tighter. I'm going to go back to the needle, the bodkin. I did just bend one of these and didn't want to. I'm doing it again. Sorry about that. I concentrate. I'm definitely someone who works close to the body. I think that's a uh, straw thing. Oh, and I just saw how long I've been doing this. This is going to be a long upload. <laughs> I'll put some timestamps in here. Alright, so I've got some flowers that are sticking out towards the end here. I'm kind of trying to poke them back in. As I go. And I'm going to go all the way to the end of this ribbon, I think. So I definitely recommend. more than a yard to start with. I think this one yard is just a bit tighter than I'd like to be. There we go as the needle pops out. And then I'm going to bring the ribbon back around. And I'm going to, I don't know if you can see that. Sorry. There we go. I'm going to tie this off as best as I can. I can use the needle to bring it down through if need be. can even tuck the end of the ribbon inside. The stems if you want. Make sure that's nice and secure. It's not going anywhere. And we gotta grab the same kind of ribbon. Well, you don't have to. I'm gonna cut off a little bit more. I 
this I'm doing with a diagonal cut. So it's pretty. And I'm using my straw scissors. All right, we're going to tie a little bow on here. Again, facial expressions help. Now your bow can be as big or as little as you want. This one's kind of little. So you know what, I'm going to trim the other tail as well. All right. And then one last thing. This is why I'm using the straw scissors. So I'm going to trim the bottoms of the stems so they're nice and even and pretty. And there you have a lavender wand sachet. And it smells really, really, really good. So don't let your cat chew on it. All right. Thank you all for joining me. Thank you for sticking around for one of the longest videos I've done yet. Enjoy your week. Enjoy the sun. See you all soon. Bye-bye.